My name is Franka Brown, Nollywood actor, producer, director, and screenwriter. So I wear four feathers in Nollywood. What comes to my mind is motion pictures, good films, well resolved with our limited funds. Basically passion. I was passion driven. I first of all I read law and I went on to read theatre arts. And um, uh, every theatre arts student, the moment you finish you want to you want to practicalize what you read in school. And that was the push for me and I even started acting whilst I was in the university within theatre arts. I started off, like I told you, with um, Rivers Between, where yeah, I acted as um, Nozzy, the greedy police officer's wife. Big question. Um, I want to start from now. Nollywood is stagnated. Well, I want to forecast that I see Nollywood being losing it in the next five years. But we need funds. The funds I'm not I'm talking about is not just loans, grants. Because we started out in Nollywood with family and friends supporting us, personal funds. And now piracy came and took off all these funds. Eight from our sweat, and a lot of us are stagnated now. But I see that the funds are released because we're not looking for the for the expertise. No, we have it. We're not looking for cameras, the, the technicals we have them. We're not looking for the for for any other thing in Hollywood but the funds. As an entrepreneur, if you make a film and that film doesn't sell, it's not because you didn't make a good film, but because the piracy has eaten deep into the fabric of the film industry. And the way to get about it is good policies from government and grants because our money has been eaten. So we, do, we, we are not looking for, grant, for, for loans now, we're looking for grants, you know, to make good films. And um, for now, to make a good film now, enter into the cinema is a lot of money. So we're looking for money to get our films into the cinema and to sustain making that act of film. So where I see Nollywood in the next five years is that if these funds are released into Nollywood and this sector utilizes these funds very well, we'll go places, we will compete in any film, film Oscars, we will. They won't reject our films anymore because if we know that we're supposed to make it in local languages, we start from day one to plan for it. But when you have little funds and you don't say, okay, let me do it this way, do it this way, it will affect the film and it will be rejected anywhere we go to. By making a good film, making a quality film, we need funds for that. And um, hey, you try making a very good film, it will sell for itself. It's anything that is good will sell in the market. It announces itself. Any quality film will announce itself. So it's um, do the right casting, do the use the right equipment, use the light lighting, the the best of uh, of locations. Um, what suits that particular scenery that you are going to create? Make sure that you do quality editing. Everything in place. And then you will break, definitely, a good film will announce itself in any good mainstream market. And then, if it is, um, if you're going to sell in, in non-speaking, English non-speaking, you make sure you, you do the ADL, the audio properly, probably to suit, if it's a, you want to make it into Greece, for instance, you get people that will do the ADL, 
and then um, it will match the actions and every other thing. Meanwhile, you have shot in English, just, just like some of the films, uh, The Witch Also Cry, all those films we watch here. They, br they broke into Nigerian markets, the others, because they are quality film. So we can also break into their own market because we have quality films. So how Nollywood can break into the other markets is by making quality films. And that also translates to funds. So we need funding for Nollywood. Okay, I want to go back a little bit to one of the beautiful Nollywood films I was in. It's called Abuja Connection. And um, another one is Valentino. Val in Valentino, I acted with Ramsey Noah as my little boyfriend. And everything was in place. That was because the producer had an eye for quality films. If it was time for feeding, the best of feeding. If it was time to rehearse, the best hands rehearse us. If it was time for anything, the quality uh, costumes, everything was in place. Then, as per then, when we did Valentino and um, Abuja Connection, you can imagine if we had, if then what, what I'm talking about is about way back 10, 15 years. I can't, I can I'm not too sure now when I when I did those films. But way back then, if we could get that from one producer, and that was OJ, he produced those the films I'm talking about. He was able to do everything. Everything was in place. Nobody was hungry, nobody was doing this, nobody, nobody was snappy, nobody, everybody was hands on deck to get things worked. And because money also exchanged hands. So everybody was happy doing the film. If that is the case in Nollywood as per today. Who make quality films because money motivates everything he was there to make sure have you eaten he was there to make sure have you done this have you done that if there's any place that there's going to be a hitch he's he's on time to make sure that that hitch is over he overcame that hitch so i'm just trying to say that uh, if we can take a cue from him and by the way that young man has not looked for himself the idea he builds hotels now that's from Nollywood there was no other thing he was doing Nollywood films he has several hotels now we can also do it it's quality films in those days he was one of the best he had one of the best quality films do you understand every of his, his film was a hit that's because he knew the art of filmmaking so I back to your question. Valentino was one of my best Nollywood films. And that dates back to 10, 15 years ago. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi. Whoopi Goldberg was is our is to one woman I look out to. She, she she acts very well and um, she was her best was to me was sister act and she did so good well she did well there and i'm looking at a black american <sighs> in nigeria here mm. well for me joke silver yes she, she started way before me, so I look up to her too. She started with, with the stage. Well, as an actor, I... Actor. That speaks it all. So I, I actually am not given the position to choose my rules. I believe the casting director, whoever casted me for a particular role, must have seen something in me that can that can bring out the best in that role. And so uh, it's not in my place to say this is the role that I should act. But if I'm given the chance to do that, I I prefer the strong 
woman rule that they normally give me. But that's not my character because I'm in between. I'm not, I'm not, not that, that um, harsh and I'm not that meek. I'm just in between. What I would like as an addition to Nollywood is forms. And when I talk about funds, not just funds, loans, no, grants. Because uh, we started Nollywood with nothing. Basically, our own sweat, money from friends, family, and friends. Um, I started with a television series called Rivers Between. There, I acted as some. Um, police officer's wife and then um, she was very very greedy and she put the greed on the husband and the husband was always on the road looking for money for her to fix her wigs for her to wear flamboyant dresses for her to look the way she feels she could look in the society and and the husband became this um, police officer that was taking so much pride and one day he was sent back in and that was it that was puffed up like this fell so that was the rule I started with and much later because that was just a just based television series much later and um, they came to do audition for behind the clouds and I was chosen that was an, a national television program so that gave me a bigger platform and then from behind the clouds I stepped into Nollywood when Nollywood started. I started with um, MME song and then um, Francis Ado's Jezebel and I acted as that wicked woman in Jezebel. One thing I like about Nollywood is um, the intrigue in our stories. We tell our stories from our own perspective. Um, our stories are mostly based on our local happenings. Um, you remember the former Isakaba, the story about the thieves, the things that happen, how our mothers attack people and things like that. And the like, vigilante people rose up and said, enough is enough. So they even went to the local native doctors. So when they come to your house and the knife turns to red, then there must be, uh, you know, uh, an assassin within the house. But that's that's one 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 part of it. What I got my inspiration from, I, I believe God, because first of all, I read law. And for me, that came with ease. But when I read theatres, it became clearer that that's where I should delve into. And whilst I was reading theatres, I was chosen to work in a film production. And one of my unforgettable moments on set was um, we, we are supposed to do an, uh, uh, an accident role and lo and behold this driver came and gave us a real accident and came and swept everybody away <laughs> and almost destroyed our camera and he was right on time when the director said action I don't know where he came from we ra and in that film they use that as the accident scene. Though the guy had to take some people to the hospital and every other thing, but not luckily, not any member of the scene of our cast and crew. Because somehow there was an argument from somewhere saying, Where is the guy coming from? Where and then the director says, No, caught, what is happening? Caught, but they didn't put the audio. Because the, the cameraman did not even hear the cut. He was like, you know, he was still filming. By the time we finished, 
We now told him there was no need for the accident rule. That the other should, the other one should be left to the imagination of the people. Because this guy cleared a lot of people on the street and they had to be taken to the hospital. That was a, a near one. A drama on itself, on scene. Even the, the person who was supposed to drive was jittery. It was like, what are we going to do again? The guy got our script and he did it very well. I would love to work with anybody that is an actor in Nollywood. I can take in lines, I can interpret the rules properly. I will not really want to choose who to work with, except I'm directing. If I'm directing, then I'll choose whoever will fit into the rules that I have in the script. But if I'm working as an actor, I will work with anybody that can interpret the role can take in lines and as an actor basically you don't choose who to work with but as a director I will work with those that know the act oh again and again I would love to work with OJ but I I don't think he's into the film production anymore. His hotels are giving him money, so that's where he is now. Like I said, film in Nigeria, it's stagnated because of piracy. And the high class films that go to the cinema, I don't know how they, they, they make their money back. Because after two weeks, it's young tough. So. Currently, I'm writing on a web series, 10 minutes web series, and um, I'm putting final touches to one other script that I intend to produce. Like I said, all boils down to forms. So I, that's what I'm working on now. Well, I must say that directors come with their styles. So what I have learned from the various directors that I have worked with is to learn their styles and um, to be able to also fit into their goals and then um, pick their brains and know what they like. So if I work with a director for the first time, I'm learning to know your style. And the second time, you wouldn't need much corrections for me. So that's basically what the directors have added to my own life. None of it. If I'm going to play a role, I do not select. I think that that's the work of a casting director to see the ability in me to be able to interpret the script. But once I'm given a script, I look out for the professionalism in that script to make sure that the script was professionally done and um, um, with good intrigues and the story is professionally told. So that's what I look out for. And um, I believe most of the casting directors in Nollywood do, their, do a great job because um, most of the roles they give to me, uh, I, I, they're good roles and I've been able to do well with them to the best of my knowledge. I must confess that they've never given me a rule that looks like me because most of the characters are very harsh characters and I'm not harsh. Uh, not meek either, I'm just in between and they've never given me a character that looks like me. So I have always interpreted the rule in the script, but not run the problem. Oh well, um, I must confess I've always gotten my dream roles. Because if if you are you are you are you are you, you've been casted and you are a misfit somewhere, you probably will not be able to carry the character. 
But the roles they've given to me so far in Nollywood, they are great roles. They are really the dream roles I want. And um, I want to be a strong character. I want to to be able to give the best to any work that I'm given. So what I've acted so far in Nollywood has been my dream roles. For the number of years I have been in Nollywood, all the roles they have given to me, I must say, are not hard. They come with ease because it's, um, for me, it's the interpretation that matters. So if you read the script properly and you wear that shoe, you should be able to know, to draw the line to know when I've gone for the for the event, I'm back, and so I remove the shoe. So it's not, um, the roles are, they really, they are not that challenging to me because I read theater arts. So um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I have passion for. So the moment you give me a role, I interpret the role on my own, in my own closet. And I come to set to give that my rehearsed interpretation to the script. And the film. I must confess that I'll go back way to that same rule I started with. It was fun to me initially, but you need to see how women flock around me in the market. Why, why are you this wicked? Why are you this, this, this? But initially when I was acting it, it was fun to me because I pushed my husband that hard. Go and get money. Do you think that I wear this? I want Brazilian uh, weave. I want this. I want that. I want, I want to make, I want to look like the president's wife. I want to... Poor police wives that are in these barracks. They must, they must obey me. This is that. That was how the woman was. To me, it was fun, but the, the repercussion much later, <laughs> it was like I went back to my head. So I'm really dealing with the public. Comes to me, eh? So you're the one that is pushing your husband to go and steal. Okay, let's see. Let's see the next episode and see what you will do to that man. Eventually, he went to jail and she suffered. So that was fun to me because initially I started out. You know, but much later I now said, hey, so this is how it, the audience react to it. So which means I was doing it well. Oh yes, every actor should. The moment you're given a script, you, you learn your lines, you internalize them. When you come on set is not when you learn your lines. You should be able to have those lines before you come on set. So yes, I prepare for roles. Oh, Denzel Washington, because I so admire his acting. And um, when I watch 24, I said one day if I have money, I will call this man to my set, no matter how old he is. My favorite. My favorite as of today is 93. Uh, one of the reasons being that um, it showcased how this country was in siege for like three days, thinking of how to sort Ebola out. But God sorted it out for us. If you take a good example at what you see in our buses, they are all packed. Seats that are meant for three people are packed, six or, or five of them inside, they will all be packed inside. That Ebola would have spread like wildfire. But God saw our problem and sorted it out for us. Do some people paid with their lives in their soul rest in peace. Mm, I guess I would have been a lawyer in the law court because that was what I started out with and then um, somehow I found my feet 
on stage, I'm on set. And since then, I have never regretted. Uh, what I've learnt, learnt from the film industry basically is that um, nothing lasts forever. So I want to tell those that are shining now, they should be entrepreneurial in the art. Uh, make sure you get you do the bees while you do the shoe, because as a, at a stage, um, you will you what you have made should speak for you. So let the the razzmatazz don't be taken away by the razzmatazz. Make sure you invest wisely. Yes, that's exactly what I've learned in the industry because some of us that did not invest wisely are paying for it today. Um, I love swimming. I love reading novels. I love watching film. By the way, that's what I do, so I love it. I love making films and I love watching films. I love reading, so I'm into literature and film. I also love traveling to beautiful places. I love visiting and I love cooking. Oh, basically our stories is the stories that we tell and the medium in which we tell them that appeals. And that's so by the way, the time we used to shoot them, because Hollywood is still trying to understand how we can make a film in a month. Both shooting and editing, and it's out in a month. Hollywood is still trying to understand that. While they're trying, try, they are also making one scene in one month. So you see, um, there are a lot of unique qualities that Nollywood possesses, and that makes us stand out. And yes, that also has given us our own unique thing because a lot of them want to come and learn how we make films in a month which to them is impractical so um, those are the unique features of Nollywood that I love and those are the elements in Nollywood that I love Everything is done with ease. Our storylines are told with ease because it's our story. We're not telling any other person's story. And um, we, we, we are good master to storytellers. Our film is stories. Basically, the, our film most of the time is drama. Storytelling from A to Z. We are master storytellers. And that's the unique element I found in our world. Oh well, I want to tell my fans that I'm not as harsh as Nollywood directors make me to look like. What you see on the films are all acting. I'm acting a role. I'm not as harsh as that woman you see. And for some of the market women who are costing me, I, I tell them I'm not, I said, hey, so why can't you act another role? I said, they've not given me that other role. But all the same, I, I love what I'm doing. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you for your views. And some of them that know that is acting come to really shake me and say, you did well in that film. And that's when I nod and I'm happy. Thank you so much. Oh well, for the little ones and the young ones that aspire to be actors and actresses tomorrow, I will advise that you go and acquire the skill. When you acquire the skill, you will go for auditions and you'll be chosen. First of all, you start from learning. 
you could learn through apprenticeship, you could learn, go to, to, to the university to brush up your art. And by the time you come out, you know your audience. And so nobody can, can do any monkey business with you. And that's my advice. You don't, you don't do any other thing in the film industry but to show your art, your talent. And if you don't have the talent, please look elsewhere.